Hey, it's Steve Jolly with the Home Buying Skills Channel. On today's show, we're gonna talk about should you buy down your interest rate and will it save you any money? Are you ready to get started? Let's get to business. So the first question I wanna answer is, what exactly is buying down your rate? Well, what it is, it's a fee that you can pay in advance that will reduce your interest rate for a couple of years or may even reduce it over the life of the loan. And usually that cost is referred to as points or maybe even discount points. And one point equals 1% of the loan value. So if your loan value is 400,000 and you have to pay one point to reduce your interest rate, then that's gonna cost you $4,000. Now I want you to remember what I said at the beginning. Sometimes the interest rate reduction is for a couple of years, like two or three years, and sometimes it's over the life of the loan. And you really need to know that before you decide to pay that. Now if it's just a couple of thousand dollars, it's probably gonna be a short time period. Usually if it's gotta be over the life of the loan, it's gonna be expensive. It's gonna be 15, 20, or $25,000 to buy that rate down. And you're gonna to wanna to know when that date changes, when that interest rate goes up, because it's a little confusing, and if you need to refinance before that rate goes up, you're gonna to wanna to plan ahead and do that ahead of time and not react to it after that rate goes up. So let's talk a little bit about who can buy down a mortgage. Who has the right or the ability to buy down a mortgage? And in most cases, it's the buyer who buys down the mortgage. Either the seller or the buyer can actually pay for it, but in most cases, it's the buyer because they're the ones that truly benefit from buying down the interest rate. They get a lower rate over the whatever term they agree to, and so that is where all the benefit is in the buy down. Now, a seller may decide to buy down the rate for you, but they're doing that because the market is softening and they'd rather buy the rate down then they would lower the price of their home. So keep that in mind. If the seller's offering to buy your rate down, they're probably doing that in lieu of lowering the price of your home. So you may pay for a little bit more home if you can get a better interest rate. Let's talk a little bit about builders. Builders too may offer to buy down your rate or they may offer you special financing at a special rate that's gonna be impossible to get anywhere else. They're doing that as an incentive to get your business they're also doing that in lieu of lowering the price. And that's the last thing the builders wants to do is lower the price, especially if they've sold that unit before at a higher price. It's really hard to look those old customers in the face and smile at them if you've sold a home to somebody after them for a lesser price. Now let's talk about the types of rate buy downs and what you can expect when you're looking at them. And the first one is sometimes called an evenly distributed rate buy down. And that's just a fancy name, which means that your rate is gonna stay the same throughout the life of the loan. So if you buy it down 1%, it's gonna stay at that level from the first day of the loan to the last day of the loan. That's what most people think that they want, but most people don't always need that because usually sometime before the 30 years or whenever you decide the end of the loan period is, interest rates will come back down and you'll be able to refinance at that time without having to go through this buy down process and pay all this money in cash on the front end. You can wait a little bit and it may be cheaper for you on the back end to do a refinance instead of buying it down. And also if it's evenly distributed, those can be really expensive because the lender needs to make up for all that interest they lost across 30 years of mortgage payments. And so that's why you'll typically see these run $20,000, $15,000 or more in cost. So the first rate buy down we'll talk about that's not evenly distributed is sometimes called the 321 rate buy down. And how that works is the first year that you have a loan, you'll have the lowest rate possible. In the second year, it'll go up a little bit. In the third year, it'll go up a little bit more and then it'll stay at that rate for the life of the loan. So that way this may get you through a couple of years of lower interest rates and that'll give you some time to refinance when the rates drop down again. So this is a less expensive way to obtain the same thing as that evenly distributed rate buy down. Now, if you don't think you need three years before interest rates drop, 
There's typically a 2-1 buy down and it works the same way except it's one less year. So your first year you'll have one rate, your second year you'll have another rate, and then after that it'll stay steady at that rate for the life of the loan. And you can refinance that one whenever you want to. So let's talk about some of the pros of buying down the rate. And the first one is it very well save you money. Depending on what the interest rates are and how much it costs to buy it down, it may save you some money and put some money in your pocket now when you really need it after you've made an expensive down payment and bought everything you need to start your new home journey. Another pro, which I discussed a few minutes ago, is it can help a seller in a down or softening market attract buyers who otherwise may not look at their home because they can't afford it, but they may be able to afford it if they had a little bit lower rate. So that's something a seller may use as an incentive to get you to buy their home. So some of the cons of buying the rate down is it can be very confusing knowing when that rate is gonna change, when it's gonna bump up. What most people wanna do is they wanna time it, so they wanna refinance before that rate gets too high. And if you're not sure when that rate's gonna go up or you forget about it, all of a sudden you're gonna be paying a much higher mortgage payment than you expected and you're gonna to have to scramble to refinance. So know those dates and know them well and put them in your calendar and give yourself the appropriate time to make those changes. Also buying your interest rate down can be really expensive, especially if you go for an evenly distributed rate buy down. So keep that in mind. And if you're only gonna live there a few years, that may not even save you any money. So you wanna make sure you calculate the savings Know that you're gonna stay there enough years where it's gonna pay for itself. We'll talk about that more in a minute. Well, let's talk about should a buyer buy down the rate? Now, before you decide to buy down your own rate, you need to think about this. Can you afford the rate buy down in addition to the down payment and all the other costs associated with buying a home? If the answer is yes, if you can afford it, then that may be the decision you wanna go with. If you can't afford to buy your rate down, then that decision's easy for you. So in order to make that decision, you need to calculate your savings. You need to know exactly how much money you're gonna save by buying your rate down. And the first thing you need to know is you need to calculate your break-even points. A break-even point is the cost of your points divided by your monthly savings. Now, for example, if the cost to buy down your rate was $16,000 and your monthly savings was $250, you divided 16,000 by 250, what you're gonna get is 64 months and that's your break even point. So if you stay with that loan for 64 months, you will break even on the cost to buy your rate down. And every month after that is gonna be profit in your pocket. So if you're not gonna stay there 64 months or longer, then you may wanna decide it's not worth it to buy your rate down. You're gonna pay more money now than you're gonna save over the long run. And that's the best way to decide. Now, I hope you enjoyed today's video on home loans. If you liked it, click the like button to let me know you enjoyed it. And if you have specific questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer them. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so you never miss a future episode. Take care, have a great day.